Hello, Jacob Torero from the Black Ship here. Apologize for my voice to sound a little bit down. Not because I not trying to feel this way, but because I am a little bit depressed. Actually a lot quite depressed and down after the close with the hardest girl I've ever been with, an eight, twenty one years old girl, a solid eight. I'm very, very picky with this rating. So when she was solid eight, she was really hot. And yeah, the topic today I want to go to is dating, casual sex, and how it could make you feel worse or better, depending on what you're looking for. If you know what you're looking for. But first, let's go over the field report and lay report. I don't want to feel so down to talk about field report and lay report because it's a very interesting set and exciting. But I'm in a really down state because people said the worst thing that could happen to you is not getting what you want and getting what you want because then you realize that shit this doesn't make me happy at all and uh, I realized that once maybe a year or two ago then I had to go into therapy just to stay floating I'm doing a lot better with the coaching that I got from my therapist with life and dating in general but this time still hit me pretty hard not as hard before but still anyway first how did it happen on Thursday I was going to a campus to pick up some chicks because I haven't been there for a while I've been working so much when I went to the campus apparently it was spring break and nobody was there, everything was empty. I'm like, fuck, I'm already here. I park and walk 20 minutes up the hill for this shit. So I might as well just go to the library and work a little bit. So I went to the library, work, saw a couple of girls walking past, talked to maybe one or two girls. The rest are just parents and students that are checking out the campus. Then really not, no one. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna go home maybe get some dinner and kind of keep studying for my certification. I walked by a girl, pretty cute, I saw her from 15, 20 feet away. I stopped her, give her a compliment, be direct, and she was on right away. She was very friendly, very happy. Oh, you're sweet, you look good as well, blah, blah, blah. And I can just send this, that she had daddy issues. And I, the player part of me, tend to be very good when smelling this like miles away. She had one of those scars that New York girls that often cut their uh, arms. Just, I don't know, just those girl with issues, even though they tend to have that. And, but I can sense it even before I see the, before I saw the, the scars. So we got along really well, and especially this girl, when you push them away, can be a little bit mean to them, don't give them all the attention, they just go crazy and they start chasing you. So I did all that in five minutes and she got really turned on, she didn't want to see me again. She only here for one week and she's going to leave, she's leaving about an hour and a half away from here. <clears throat> so we exchanged contact and we we're going to meet each other on Sunday. I didn't hear back from her for a day, two. I thought oh, maybe it's another flake. Text her again on Sunday with the dot 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 question mark, and she respond. I was uh, I posted copy of a couple of texts in the Discord, but then we end up meeting up, and I knew I knew it's sex gonna happen because based on the five minute conversation initially, it just so on. There's no way I'm not going to sleep with her. But I processed the day at normal. 
And I haven't had sex in fucking June, man. Sometimes I have so much doubt on myself when I would do coaching. Like, I want to avoid a fucking fraud. I haven't had sex in June. And what kind of dating advice and coaching I'm giving? What the hell? Even though I was in my car for three months, it's hard. I didn't close anything. I didn't have a place to live for three months. And then for the last three or four months, all I do is try to get my life together, my finance together, so I can at least have a place to stay and have money to save to go to Europe. Uh, I came here and there, but wasn't consistent and back to where I was before until for the last few weeks. And I start having a couple of girls I'm seeing casually. And then this happened. So we went on a date. She showed up at a, she, she texted me, um, and I kept showing up a couple of minutes late. She's like, oh, are you busy talking to some of your girlfriends? And I was like, yeah, sorry, last minute booty call. And she just laughed at it. Like, I knew it was on. It's just no way it's not on. And when we met, we went, we walked far apart, and she's just on right away. She's like, we hold hand, and she tried to, she get really close to me, and she got so turned on. It's just so obvious. We make out a lot, and we went to the bar, I get a couple of drinks. And then, okay, let's go back to my place. She said, no, I'm, I, I don't go back to your place on the first day, blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, let's go and get dinner or karaoke or something. She down for karaoke, and I was kind of, oh, my baby, let's go karaoke. I don't want to do dinner because it's too intimate for me. I told her that, like, for me, dinner is like date 15, not the first day or second date. So... Um, we walk back to my place, and she's like, "No, I, I, I don't have sex on first date. I'm not, I'm not that kind of girl." Blah blah blah. blah. I'm like, okay, it's fine. And I actually were fine. Like, okay, fine. If you don't have sex, we can just go back to my place, hang out for maybe an hour. Maybe the karaoke didn't start until ten, and it was nine fifteen or something. I'll just hang out and wait. We could go to the karaoke because I, I haven't been karaoke for a while, and I was down for it. So um, we went back to my place, and then. We play, we put on the song. She put on, I, I made her put on the song. And I sure she wouldn't stop kissing me. And then we started having sex right in there. Like, dude, I'm not a kind of girl. It's, I don't know. I don't know what she test. Maybe, I don't know. She just tried to justify, just, justify it so she doesn't feel bad. Who knows? But, yeah, uh, and she's bisexual. She's hot. She was 21. And she had that kind of sorority look of college girl. Is she in college? And I would say she's a solid eight out of ten. A solid eight. If if her body a little bit more fit, her body's good, but if like if she work out and she in shape she'd probably like be a, be an eight and a half and nine easy. And also the problem is I don't feel a lot of pleasure having sex with her. Maybe because there, there wasn't a lot of connection and I didn't want to admit that because connection does make sex feel better. And then yeah, that's that's it. She left. I haven't texted her back. She wanted to do karaoke with me before she leave town. But I'm not I'm not sure. I don't want to get too emotionally attached to this kind of girl. I don't judge her, but just not like because she slept with me so so quickly. I mean, these go with issues. Daddy issues, I guess. I have dad issues and mom issues too, so I'm not judging anyone. But I just know that her issue bring up my issues. Like the seven a year ago, the first seven I ever been with. She's the first eight. And this time I still feel, I wouldn't feel attached to her so much as I feel really empty and down, and the world become more dull and l less colorful. I thought it's gonna be so great finally having sex with an eight, but and the validation that I got from her and other people is my blowing. And I was the guy. She went all the way to. Uh, campus which is an hour bus away back and, and then two hours back and forth just to get a passport so she can go to the bar with me because we we're planning to go to the bar then I knew it's gonna be a close deal that's, that's the validation like the, how much she liked me and when I went out with her, all the people looked at me differently oh my god like how did this guy get this girl like the girl I'm not supposed to be with the girl out of my league 
people just look at me differently. Oh my God. And even the waiters and the bartender, they look at me, they got jealous and got mad. I can see it in their eye. They're not happy having an Asian, average Asian guy getting this hard of a girl and they're serving our table. So the, the, the validation was just off the roof. I was the guy I always wanted to be. I could keep lying to myself that maybe an 8 wouldn't do it. There are 9 and 10. But I guess I'm mature enough to know that that is not the case. Yeah, it's like when you make a million dollars, people spend all their whole life chasing after a million dollars and once they finally get there, they say, what the fuck, this is... make it even worse, right? So there are two parts of everyone. Mm. In psychology, they're called anxious attachment and avoidant attachment. Anxious attachment is the type of guy that just go crazy, head to toe for a girl. He might have option, but he would give up everything, even his life, for just the girl that he barely know. Like he got emotionally attached very easily. So on, but on the let's say on the left side, that guy on the extreme right, there's another guy, the avoidance, the, the typical pickup artist guy, that go on women after women, body after bodies, like beautiful attract women. So from the outside in, you would think, wow, this guy is, God, what I always always wanted. This is my dream. This is the guy, and I always look at him like that, and I always want to be the guy. And now I am I am, now I am the guy. And then fuck. And I was able to feel what the guy feels. And it, it wasn't that good. So everyone had the split of being they call it inner child, the one that need love, caring and giving that giving without expecting anything back and need the affection, which is the affection addiction that I'm talking about. And the other side was just the persona that you put on when you go to pick up you know, women, but slowly become part of yourself, called the, just the player. In these two parts, everybody have on the, a certain level of split. Some people very split between, just like people like, you want to go to the gym, but you also want to eat fast food in McDonald's. Some people have the bigger split than the other, and I have a very extreme split between the personality. I twitch it the curse, but also the blessing because I would be able to feel the emotion and the experience being two completely different guys on two extreme ends and know what it feel like. For the anxious attachment type of guys, they I feel like in the past, I would I would lay down like my tablets. I would lay down in traffic just for her, and I barely know her. I would give up everything in my life just to be with her. The hopeless romantic type, I guess. And I was also the other guy that treated her like shit and didn't care much about her, didn't kind of mean to her, even though she really into me. And like, I just don't give a shit about her. And they just go crazy about me, and just go women after women. But so the the anxious guy, he had he was able to feel the the affection and the love, but those emotions were too much. It consumed him. He just burned himself out. Like he would give up anything in life, even himself, for a girl, which is not the right thing to do, especially if it's the wrong girl. The, but the, on the other hand, the other avoidant guy, is, he couldn't feel any affection at all. Which I've been there, especially I was that guy last night. There wasn't, there wasn't even pleasure during sex. There's just like a thing, to, like a box to check, to get out of the way. I mean, I did everything, I make her come, I come, and we also come together at the end. But it wasn't any affection. And in the end, laying in bed with her, naked, cuddling. And while I was the when I was the the player guy, I just, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, I just want her to leave, or just have sex again, or just leave. I don't enjoy this cuddling. Or this because I couldn't feel the affection. So in the past, it's kind of 
switching back and forth. I was this player guy, but I got really attached to her, and then I kind of become a player guy again to find an extra one. But this is how I would be able to differentiate myself. So I kind of have some boundary, have some put some. I won't let my inner child or the anxious part of me close anywhere close to this girl because she has so many issues. In the past, I didn't. I was neglecting. I just have sex and I treat her bad, but also the, the part of me that star for affection got attached to her which is really bad because with this girl the moment you treat her nice just she can sense that you kind of treat her a little, little bit nice a um, little bit care for her she's just gone man they, but if you kind of treat her like she doesn't really mean much to you you kind of don't really care about her she's she's gonna she won't stop chasing you it's just a the basic dad issue if you don't know that you can look look it up i'm not gonna explain what the basic is you should know that by now. Mm. So, yeah, I'm laying in bed with her and I couldn't feel any affection at all. But this time, in the past, I would get attached because that's the only way I could feel something, right? But this time, I was able to not letting her near the inner child, the, the vulnerable part of me. Sorry, I sound like a, like a therapist-ish advice, even though, which is opposite of what Tom liked to preach. But however, these things is important because if you keep chasing women after women and physical attraction, in the end, when you actually get there, it's not, the, the void even get bigger and the emptiness even feel worse, which is uh, which I've been feeling all day today. So, how much time do we have? Okay, halfway there, so we have some time. So yeah, what's, what's the, it's like, that's why Buddha said life is suffering, living is suffering, because you don't really win either way. And it, it's not, 99% there's nobody be able to just stay in the middle and not being too anxious or too avoidant. But it's going to be on one end or the other. That's, and very, very few people, maybe less than 10, 10 20% people, 10% of people that kind of healthy in the middle and they can enjoy casual sex sometimes, but they can also be able to keep themselves together. I wasn't good at it. I was terrible at it. I'm getting better after two years of therapy. But still not easy. So, um, so that's that. That's a late report. That's a little bit about how anxious the attachment of water attachment work. I, I probably could go a bit deeper in, into this topic another day because I think it's very important because people think, oh, guys both just have sex and walk away without feeling anything when like, girl is about to get attached to a guy after sex. No, it's changed a lot nowadays. And especially there's just so many girls have been conditioned in a way that they just have sex and move on. Not a big deal. And guy been paralyzed by not women but by society. Toxic masculinity, the cancer culture. Guy become more beta. Also, they can and they, oh, they, come, they also encourage that, oh, you should get in touch with your feminine side, blah, 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 blah. But then there's a lot of guys naturally get attached to a girl very easily, have the sex. And that's normal. Don't feel bad if you, if that, that, is, that is you. I was on both ends, which is rare because there's only about, I think 10% of people have the, they call ambivalent attachment which is you have both sides so that's why I was able to play the player so well but also got so deeply in love with someone in the past in a short amount of time and then scare her away with my neediness so that's a constant battle man so that's the first half this so on and also while we're on this topic why do guy keep chasing out after women, attractive women, and think that will fix their life. I'm not saying that you should stop doing that because the game has been my therapy for years and I wouldn't recommend you uh, giving up on love, dating, and game altogether and just one of those genetic, generic advice, self-improvement online. Oh, it's all about build and they will come, you know, 
working out, making money, and then eventually you, they will come chasing after you. First, that's not true. And secondly, even if girl come at you, you won't know how to handle them, and they just gonna like play you like a fiddle. Especially that's when those rich billionaires guy got played by the the Russian girl. They just spin them around and take advantage of them. So, yeah, not that advice I want to give. But it's funny. I also talked to Chat GPT uh, and bypass a couple of the PC future shit and ask them, "What do you think, guys? That keep chasing after women, and even though it doesn't really bring them happiness." The first is the couple answer they give me and a couple of things we can do so we can mitigate that and can still enjoy intimation with women, I guess. First is social conditioning. Society to and all. Beautiful women has value. It's also ev- evolutionary. If you had a beautiful woman, that means you have your high value men. So society only put beautiful women on the pedestal and go, okay, if I have her, I will look good. That also leads to the peer pressure as well when you want to look good in front of your friend, your family, or gosh, you have a hot, beautiful girlfriend, like the baby was respect and, and yeah, when status and respect is the biggest thing the men want. Also the instant gra- instant gratification that you have when you pursue it, try to pursue a woman, get lost in the moment, and try to get her like, just like when you hunt go hunting. You're really in the zone, or you're like sparring fight, you're just in the zone, and it's all you want to do with that. You're in flow state, which is good, not a bad thing, but if you attach to the outcome of having that beautiful, of, of be able to get the women, is the validation that you're looking for, then it's not, then it can have a negative effect. Another thing is fear of missing now, because everyone is pursuing attractive women, why would I be left behind? Why would you join them? Why wouldn't I, especially in the pickup community? Also emotionally, maturity is another thing that caused men chasing after this because without <clears throat> understanding your own needs and desires, which is important because not everyone have the same needs and desires. For some avoidant guys, they keep moving women after women because they couldn't feel anything after sex or after sleeping with a woman because just imagine like I, I've been there so I can explain it very well that a lot of people don't understand is for avoidant guys it's like sleeping with a beautiful woman was like it's similar to like you spend so much saving work hard to save money to go to a buffet or a very fancy restaurant but the moment you got in the restaurant with all the effort and the work on the saving you did just to be in, in the restaurant. And when you are in the restaurant, none of the food tastes like anything. You have no taste. The, you can eat whatever you want, but there's no taste. And you can eat as much as you want, but you don't feel full. Your stomach feels empty and your mouth doesn't taste anything. That's what it's like to have sex with a beautiful woman as a avoidant, guys. That's why they have to move from one to another right away because they just can't stay. And I, I was curious in the past, like, if a girl's really beautiful and you sleep with her once, why wouldn't you want to do at least one more time or a couple more times? Why wouldn't you never see her again and just put on the jacket and leave out the door? You see it in a lot of movie. The guy just get out of the bed, put a shirt on and leave, never see the girl again. And the girl's just cry, you know, like typical uh, douchebag movie. And when I experienced myself, I was able to understand that they leave because they couldn't stay. You wouldn't come back to a restaurant that you eat and the food doesn't have, have no taste and you doesn't feel anything in your stomach after an hour of eating. So you just have to go to the next restaurant and the next restaurant and the next restaurant and thinking that, oh, maybe it's, it's the restaurant, it's not me. But in reality, it's something wrong missing inside you that causing that. You couldn't enjoy the food, you couldn't taste anything. Something wrong with you and you need to fix that. So that's the emotional the issues that you have that you need to you need help. So 
that is reason to cause. So what we can do about it? Because you don't want to just give up women and dating and affection in general. There's only a few good things in life that have to offer. Music, food, sex, affection, travel. Like it's like a friend, family. It's like very, very few things you can count on the on your fingers. Is only very few things that make life worth living in bearable. But if you give up women, sex, and affection, then like half of life already gone, right? So what can we do to mitigate at least if you have deep issues like me or if you or prepare yourself once you get there, when you get the girl you only want it, the harder girl your type, the hard girl that your type, it's just, it's like making a million dollars. What do you, what can we do to prepare that so we so you don't f- fall into the void like I do right now? Uh, maybe a couple. I have to talk to my life coach to see what she said. But a couple of things Chat GPT give me, and I think it's quite it's quite good. Uh, first is focus on the experience. It's not about the end goal of checking a box or a name on a spreadsheet, but the experience when you're with someone. So try to be present because I wasn't really present. I was trying to like mean to an end, get this girl. Have sex with her, but I wasn't super present. Med- meditation helped with that, but also consciously present. And when you think back on the experience, don't think about oh, I be able to have sex with a really hot girl. And when, especially when you break about with your friends, like we always do, don't think about don't break break because when you break with your friend, you break about what happened. Oh, I fucked this girl. This is how it happened. It wasn't the experience when you sp- spending with her. Like, the flooding, the the push ball, the kiss, you know, like kind of the, the jokes you got made, and like the sex, the kissing, the affection, when your skin touches your skin, like those things, is is the core of what happened. But as men, we're just so logical, and we're only looking at the result, so we forget about the experience. That's when it make it worse in the end because you got a girl, but you didn't experience anything. The food doesn't taste like anything. You don't feel full. So, of course, it's going to feel worse. That's why I was so curious. Like, why did it feel worse? After having sex with an eight that I always wanted, at least it should feel the same. Not better, but at least it should feel the same. I expect it to feel a lot better. But if not better, then it should be just the same. Why did it feel worse? So maybe because I didn't focus on the, the experience, but the result uh, was ex- expectation. Don't put too much expectation on the experience that it should be mind-blowing because I had a lot better sex with the six than this eight. I have way better sex, way better sex with a six. Than an eight. It's not like, we, not like we did anything crazy in bed. We do the same thing, but... The, chem- the chemistry, the emotion, the physical feeling, even the physical feeling, in my opinion, is feel different. And we're better with the sex in the past. So, they don't put to my expectation that this encounter would be mind-blowing. It could be very me- m- mediocre, even no matter how harsh she is. So manage your expectation. Also, Focus on the connection you have with her, so you can get your affection need meet. So, and also, building meaningful connections is a good thing. That not only doesn't have to be with the girl that you go and have casual sex with, or are having a casual relationship. With. It could be put time energy to building meaningful connection with people, coworker, friends, family, activities that you enjoy doesn't have to be romantic. And I am having the second day with a girl that I'm probably not going to try to sleep with, but she could be just maybe uh, friends, maybe, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't really believe about female friends, but I'm just kind of maybe in a way using her just to have my 
meaningful connection. She benefits from that way as well. But I want to do that and probably going to help with this. Make cancer check doesn't impact me so badly. Third, fourth thing is explore your values and priorities. So make sure the reflect on what you want out of life because Cash of Sex and Beautiful Women has been on the top of my list, probably number one and number two of my list for a very long time. And that shouldn't be because that might not bring you happiness. So you have to prioritize to know what you want, what your value, and how Cash of Sex fit into your life and your goals in general. Because my goal is travel and live in Europe and be financially free. So women should not, and casual sex should not be the top in the list. Maybe I'm just trying to avoid some emptiness or some issue that I have, that I still have, that I haven't worked through yet. Yeah. And the final point is just consider therapy or counseling. It's just fine to, because society say, oh man, just suck it up, be a man. Yes, it's true, but you also need somebody, some guidance to work through your inner work because pick up is most people don't want to pick up because emotionally work and people don't want to admit that they need it so pick up artists were are like day game was better than average guy because we are, we most day game you meet would be most of the time would be a corner guy not only because they practice the game yes because they practice game but the main reason even if they super beginner they are cool person because they are guys that admit that, that they are not emotionally good with women. They're not good with women. They have to train they, they emotionally, their EQ, the game. So they admitted that they have less ego on that side. So they be able to progress a lot further. Just like me, I was able to do way better than the natural guy on average. Natural guy that I know in the past, they do way behind me. They get a girlfriend an average girlfriend settled down, they'd never be able to sleep with a sorority girl or so girl this hot. They couldn't believe it when they see me with a girl. So when you don't have no ego, you can go a lot further. And the same thing applies for therapy and counseling. If you think like you have issues you need to work through, you know, go for some therapy, some life coach. And depend on what's your relationship with your parents. If you're not close to your dad, then get a male therapist. If you're not close to your mom, then get a female therapist because you need that maternal love to to heal but also to give you more strength to work on your inner demons because you have to face them, all your issues in the past. You have to work through them and face it. And it's a very scary thing to do. And I've been doing that for two years, so I know how it is. It's not easy, but also accept that it's okay if you need therapy because you don't have to be crazy to need therapist this is somebody that you can tell everything to because you couldn't tell all these dating pickup to your parents but you can't tell to your wings but you can also couldn't tell all the emotional the depression the anxiety the void to your wings because he wouldn't be able to understand and he wouldn't even if he listened he wouldn't know what to do with it so you especially when it relate to pickup you can't even tell your parents you couldn't really talk to anyone about the issues so the therapy is a life coach is a really good option. So I do highly recommend them. Big yeah, it's my message and my could be a little bit different from Tom. But I think this helped a lot. It helped me a lot in the past and now. I mean, still feel really down, really empty after that after yesterday. Yeah, I expect it should be feel so much better after sleeping with she looked like a sorority. She looked like Amber Heard, a hot young version of Amber Heard. God. And yeah, when during the sex, I still remember the sex, but it's, it's just like watching a really good porn, but there's really no feeling in it. I didn't, I wasn't even turned on. I'm still thinking I should see her again or not. Anyway, we're running a little bit over time. So that's what happens, lay report, few report. Why a um, guy chasing after women and think that will make their life complete? And what can you do? Oh, a couple more things. Actually, 
practicing my this is on the second page of note I'm missing out. The practicing mindfulness meditation, yes, help with that daily routine. I went to a workout five, six days a week, so today I feel a bit depressed. So I went to the gym, do a heavy chest day and kinda helped me lift me up lift me up a little bit. So that's helped a lot. Also get in touch with your body. So mindfulness, meditation, uh Get in touch with your body, physical exercise, help you with that also. Affection, oxytocin, especially after cancer sex. If you if, if cancer sex tend to like get you, then after that, the next day, go out the sun, get vitamin D, exercise heavily, meditate, go see your friends, see your families. So go see a movie, take take yourself on a take yourself on a date, dress nice, go to a nice restaurant, treat yourself well. So you can, that's the message to yourself that no matter if there's another person here or not, I will treat myself well. And that help a lot. So you, you don't have to give, give up casual sex. You don't have to give up game and just be some fake, fake uh, self-improvement shit. Just money and, and from gym. You know, that also so fucking depressing if you think about it. So you don't have to give it up, but be mindful of how you're doing it and how it could affect you. Also, try to mitigate them after, like there's certain food and supplement you can take after you cheat meal, so your body, you won't feel like shit. You won't, you, you won't feel that shitty, and you'll be able to function. So, that, here's a couple of things you could do after casual sex. And be mindful with it, so this again, this, it, uh, play with fire, so you can get burned. But it's part of life, so I'm not complaining that I had sex with a hot eight. But it wasn't as clamorous as people seeing from the outside in. Because I see people look at me when I walk with that girl in a bar and people are like, how the fuck is this Asian guy, average looking Asian guy, got this girl? Mm. But yeah, be, be careful with the validation and Especially if you have a lot of issues, so keep get wrapping life at all and keep going out, keep meeting women, but also working on your inner, not inner game, but also inner issue that you have. Everyone have this kind of demon, so face it, be strong. I will be here with you guys. And anything, community is here. Go to Discord. We are here. So keep wrapping life at all and be brave. Yeah, that's how I say. Be brave is when you're afraid of something, but you do it anyway. So, and you will grow, so you get stronger, and it will all be worth it in the end. So, be brave. Ta-da.